So today the mission is to change the power steering pump and the water pump. The first thing I'm doing is I'm using a little length of hose to use it like a straw to remove all of the fluid that is in the reservoir for the power steering pump. I'm doing this so I can add clean fluid to the reservoir, turn the car on, and then I'm going to um, turn the wheel all the way to the left, all the way to the right, and try to flush some of the old fluid out of the power steering pump. I took it to Honda, had them diagnose that whine that I was having with the car. They diagnosed, diagnosed it to the power steering pump. Since the car is 140,000 miles and I'm going to be down in here anyways, I figured I'd go ahead and change the water pump as well. So, they said that I should get all the contaminants out of the system first. This is my best idea as to how to do that, is to get all the old dirty fluid out, as much of it as I can, and then replace it with clean fluid flush through the system. I may do that once or twice depending on how dirty it comes out uh, each time before I start trying to remove the old power steering pump. So that's where I'm starting first for this job. Also just a heads up, having a syringe like this is quite a bit faster if you've got one of these handy. If not, doing the hose method that I said works just as well. With this obviously you would just stick it down in like that, pull the plunger, to get whatever fluid you can out and then dispose of it properly. So I've got all the fluid out at this point. The next step is to add clean fluid to it, turn the car on, turn the wheel all the way left, all the way to the right, all the way left, all the way to the right. Do that a couple times to cycle that new fluid through the power steering system and then drain it again. Okay, I flushed this thing out about four or five times. I've gone through, let's see, about two and a half bottles of fluid takes about a half a bottle of fluid to fill that reservoir. Um, it looks significantly cleaner and smells a whole lot better than it did when I started. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and put the car up on the jack, put it on a jack stand, get the wheel off, and see if I can gain access up into that um, the uh, power steering pump. Another thing you want to do is remove the serpentine belt before you jack the car up. It's a lot easier to do when it's on the ground because it's not as high in the air. I've got another video on how to do that. I'll add the link probably right here on how to remove that belt. Uh, using regular tools, by the way, without buying this special tool. Um, the tool's only $15, but it doesn't come with a 19 millimeter wrench, which is what you need. So that's the only reason why I didn't buy it. Um, it doesn't have the size I need. Otherwise, I would have probably bought that. It's kind of difficult to get those two wrenches up in there, but I do have a video on that. I'll put the link right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the car in the air and start seeing if I can get to this power steering pump. So you've got the car in the air, you've got a light in place, support it on a jack stand. The reason you want to support it on a jack stand, if you're going to do the water pump anyways, you're going to need to take off the motor mount that's on the left side over here so you can drop the engine down and get to that uh, tensioner bolt. Now what I'm doing here is I'm also removing this plastic, this plastic liner in here so that I can have more access into that area. This is a pretty tight area to work in, so getting any extra access you can get is going to help you. And you're gonna thank me for telling you to do that later, trust me. Um, I've already attempted to remove that belt tensioner bolt one time using a wrench and I could not. It was just on there super tight. So this time, I'm gonna to attempt to gain access to it. I think if I drop the motor down, just a little bit, I can access it just barely right here because this wall ends right here and then comes to an L right there. I can just barely get an extension in that way and I'm going to hit that junk with the impact wrench try to get it out. I've actually already bought a new bolt at Honda. They're only like $3.50 for that tensioner bolt so that, um, you know, if I happen to break it, I've got another on hand. I don't have to try to, you know, go wrangle one up or anything like that. So, anyways, I'm going to do the power steering pump first. That's the bugger you're trying to get at. It's not too terribly difficult to get up in there. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge, but not too bad at all. The real challenge is going to come in when I try to get... Where's that bolt at? Eh, well, that's the pulley. That, that bolt I'm referring to is somewhere up in there. You can't see it right now. But like I said, I'm going to drop the motor down in a little bit to gain access to that. I'll probably just make two different videos, one for the water pump and one for the power steering pump. But 
I wanted to show you both since I'm in here and you can kind of see both of them. So at this point, like I said, I'm just going to try to peel back some of this plastic a little bit, get it out of the way, and then start attacking this right over here. I will start by removing the bolts. Um, I'll identify where they're all at in a minute, but there's one there. There's probably at least one or two on the top. And I'm going to remove all those first and uh, then disconnect the lines because once you disconnect the lines, there's going to be power steering fluid all over the place and it's going to be kind of a pain in the butt to deal with. So I'm going to remove it, dismount it from the engine first, then deal with the lines. So I'll show you where those bolts are located in just a moment. Okay guys, if you're joining me for my adventure in the water pump swap, this is the water pump pulley. You want to get those three bolts out of there. You're probably going to have to insert a screwdriver into one of these holes right here at the around the outer edge to keep it from rotating. Use a 10 millimeter wrench, remove those three bolts, and get the pulley off of there. Okay, so now that you've got that pulley off the water pump, the next step is to remove this motor mount here. There's a bolt here, two bolts here you have to remove, and this rub, big rubber block will come out. Once that big rubber block is out, there's one bolt right underneath there that holds this aluminum piece to here, and then you got to remove these two bolts and pull this whole aluminum triangle out of there. Now before you do this though, you do have to support the engine. So grab your jack, put it towards the rear of the engine with a piece of 2x4 underneath the oil pan and relieve the weight off of that motor mount before disassembly. I'm going to do that, show you what to do next. Okay, one thing I failed to mention was to disconnect this little grounding cable from that triangle. You see I've got the motor mount removed and the purpose behind this was to gain direct access to that bolt right there. That is the bolt that holds the uh, tensioner in place. And the last time I tried to do this, I tried to put a wrench on it. it was not coming off. Somebody way over tightened the crap out of that thing. So I'm going to tap it a couple times with the impact wrench, see if it comes out. Before I take that bolt loose right there to take the tensioner off, however, I am going to disconnect the hydraulic tensioner right there at that top mount. I don't know what size wrench that is, but that's just underneath the alternator. I'm going to go ahead and uh, disconnect that before popping that bolt loose. Okay, I've got that tensioner disconnected down in there, so that was actually a 12 millimeter, by the way. I think the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and disconnect the negative battery cable and remove the alternator out of the way, because that's right above where the water pump is. That would give me quite a bit more access down in that area to get all the, there's five bolts that need to be removed total to get the water pump out. So I'm going to remove the two bolts that hold the alternator in after disconnecting the negative battery terminal. There's one bolt right there, I don't know if you can see it, right at the tip of my finger, and there's another down below over here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, get that thing out of the way. So once you remove those two bolts for the alternator and disconnect this one wire that was there, you can swing the alternator up and out of the way and just kind of set it on top of the valve cover. And once you do that, you see that uh, you can get to those bolts a whole lot easier on that water pump. So the next item of business is to try to get that tensioner completely out with this bolt that I told you is right here. And again, that is a eight millimeter uh, Allen wrench. I'm gonna try to hit that with an impact wrench, pop that bad boy out of there. All right, people, so here's the bear. This is the setup I used to get it out. Eight millimeter uh, Allen wrench on an impact wrench. I actually had to hit it a few times, crank the pressure up, hit it a few more times, um, crank it over to the clockwise position, the tightening position, hit it like that a little bit, and then turn it back to reverse, hit it again. And I guess that's what actually broke it loose was driving it forward ever so slightly. Um, I did mar up the, um, the cavity where the Allen wrench goes in, the actual, I guess you would call it the head, the hex head. But I did buy another bolt before doing this because I thought that I may destroy the bolt in the process. So I do have another one. So the next step of this process is there are five bolts around the water pump, holding the water pump in. If you grab the new water pump, you can see where they're all at. But basically, you just remove those five bolts, pull the water, rump, uh, water pump out of position, place the new O-ring on the new water pump, place it into position, being sure not to 
mess up the new o-ring at all you want to make sure it gets a good seal and then put the five bolts back in and tighten them to the proper torque i'm gonna have to look up the proper torque rating maybe it says it in the instructions i'm not sure but i'll check that out and i'll show you how to lay the new o-ring in place once i pull this old water pump out of position so guys there's my new bolt here's the new water pump the o-ring you just basically lay it in position like that make sure you don't kink it as you're putting it against the block surface uh, make sure it doesn't get out of that channel or anything make sure that it fits uh, nice and flush the way it should against the block. Now I looked at a few different websites. It seems to be nine foot-pounds is the consensus for the torque on these water pump bolts. So it's just as easy as pulling those five bolts out, pulling the old water pump off the block, make sure not to use anything to pry between it, uh, maybe just hit the, uh, the shaft of the water pump like with a little hammer, just give it a little tap, it should pop right off. But don't stick a screwdriver between the uh, water pump and the block because then you can mar the surface, the o-ring will make a good seal, and then you're going to have a, a water leak. You don't want that. So pop the old one off, put the new one in place, make sure the o-ring stays in the channel, and tighten the five bolts down to nine, nine foot-pounds of torque. Okay? Pretty simple. All right, people, you've got your new water pump in. Um, basically, you just have to put the car back together. I would surmise that if you got to this point, you should know how to put everything back together. It's really not that hard. You just put the two bolts back in for the alternator, reconnect that one wire, reconnect your negative battery cable. Also, you are going to need the uh, radio code to get your radio to work again, so be aware of that. Then, you're going to use your jack to raise your motor back up, Put reinstall your motor mount, and put your serpentine ba belt back on. Um, I will sh make another video on how to put that serpentine belt on because it is a little tricky. I do have another video that has the routing. I will put that link right here in the corner for you so you can link and see how it's supposed to be routed. After that link, I'll also pop up the link that will show you the details on how to get the serpentine belt back on. Because like I said, it is a little bit tricky. So uh, yeah, make sure you fill the car back up with coolant after everything. Make sure everything's cooling properly. Make sure you don't have any weird noises or anything like that. And I'm going to give the uh, engine compartment a nice spray down with some simple green. Hose it down really good. Clean out any mess that I made while I was in there. Uh, thank you for watching. If you thought this was a good video, share it with somebody who might benefit from it. Uh, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to my channel as well. Thank you for watching.